So we talk today uh, about the Fibonacci sequence. Now Fibonacci was uh, an Italian mathematician and sort of probably one of the more famous things uh, that he's known for is the Fibonacci sequence. It's one of the sort of very famous sequence in computer science uh, and in a whole bunch of different areas. And there's a decent chance that you've probably already heard of it. The Fibonacci sequence essentially has the following definition. It says that f of zero is zero, f of one is one, that is f of zero is zero for n is equal to zero, f of one is one for n is equal to one. And for all n greater than one, there's a certain sort of relationship which says f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus f of n minus two. So f of n is essentially the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. So essentially what we can do is we can sort of compute uh, f0, f1, uh, f2, f3, so on and so forth. Now f0 and f1 are given by definition. So f0 is zero by definition. Uh, f1 is one by definition. But f2 would then be the sum of f1 and f0. And f3 would be the sum of f2 and f1 and so on and so forth. So as long as uh, the, the input is small, we can actually compute it by hand or even use a sort of simple calculator to actually calculate it. So we can go ahead and calculate, uh, you know, F2, uh, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. But what happens if we start getting larger, right? What happens if you say, I want to compute F10? It may not be such a big deal. Maybe you can do it by hand. You can do it by computer. What happens if you had f 1,000, f 10,000, and f gets larger and larger and larger? So f 10, f 100, f 1,000, f 10,000. You can see that the computational burden will actually get quite heavy, right? So if we, you know, if we just try and compute it by hand, uh, it's it's you know going to get really cumbersome. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with the following question. I'm going to ask you to design two algorithms, not one, two, for computing the nth Fibonacci number. The first algorithm can be brute force. Does the job, does it correctly. May not be very efficient, but actually does the job. That's algorithm number one. But then I also want you to think about, can we do better? Of course, you need to have the correct solution, but can you actually do better than the first algorithm. So I'm going to leave you with this question and we'll circle back to this question uh, sometime later, but have a think about it, have a shot at it uh, and see what you get. Okay.